Hands up. Ni hen kan skrøst. Så er det bare en spænk, som er tak for en vilje til dig. Today I'd like to talk about storytelling. Uh, it's a tradition of our Lakshmi people, as well as many other nations uh, within our territory close by, like the Nooksack tribe, the Stalo nation, the Stetian nation, the Shwapen nation, and the Okanagan nation. All these nations surround us. But we all have stories to tell, and uh, some, some of them are similar, like the Coyote stories and Transformer stories. Uh, they're all uh, similar, but uh, they're adapted to wherever you're living. Uh, like, for example, in the Captain Nation, the Fraser Canyon, we're called the Lower, the lower uh, Nation people because uh, of the, our location. And today I'd like to talk about uh, the Coyote stories. Um, um, and sometime in the future, we'll be talking about the Transformers. Um, but today I'd like to talk about the, um, the, the coyote and its relationship to the animals and to the people. Um, today the, my topic is uh, the coyote and the wittick. Now the, the coyote is very uh, scheming and conniving type of individual. He's a trickster, as you know, in, the, in the many of our tales and the legends that we've, uh, we share with each other. Uh, today we'd like to talk about the Wittick because the Wittick season is uh, upon us and has been here for quite some time in the early spring. So I relate the story to my grandson who is 19 months old right now and, and I've been practicing with him um, and letting him know what the Wittick is all about and what the coyote's intentions are also in his life. So to start off with, um, the coyote decided to visit the Wittick. And the Wittick lived in a small house uh, below a large rock. And the Wittick uh, lived on deer, as you know. And um, in early spring, is, uh, there's lots of Wittticks on deer. And when, whenever the, the Wittick wanted uh, to uh, um, secure a deer, he would uh, go to the large rock and, and tap it once. And the deer would fall down from the cliff. And that's where he would live. he live on the deer. And if you wanted four deer, he'd tap the rock four times, and uh, four deer would come upon it. And that was how he, he obtained uh, his, his food. Now the coyote knew this, um, how, how the deer procured his food, and he also knew the, the magic of the stick that the Wittick had on his possession. And of course the coyote, um, as you know, uh, he was kind of a greedy type of person. He wanted to wit he had wanted possession of the magic stick himself also. So he visited the Wittick, and uh, he was invited into the Wittick's house. Um, and uh, there was no meat in the house for the guests. So the Wittick said, uh, I will have to go out and, and procure some food for you uh, so you can um, feed yourself and be, so you will not be hungry. But the, the coyote, Knowing that the Wittick uh, was a lady, lazy individual, um, he said, uh, "Hold off! I'll I'll go and I'll go and fetch a uh, a deer for you. Uh, there's no trouble um, for me uh, as long as you lend me your stick." And um, knowing the the the, uh, the the value of the stick, the coyote said he wanted to have possession of it. So the the Wittick finally assented and said. Um, I will give you the stick, I'll loan, lend you my stick, and as long as you go and get the meat uh, for us to eat. But um, in Coyote's mind, he wanted to uh, try the stick out for himself. So, but before the uh, Wittick gave the Coyote the stick, he gave the Coyote some strict instructions. He told the Coyote never to strike the, the rock more than four times and without any other further instructions. So Coyote agreed to that. So a coyote went out to the, the cliff where the deer were and he got the stick and, and struck the rock once. And one deer fell down from the cliff. And knowing that the, the value of the stick, uh, coyote struck it four times and uh, four deer fell off the cliff. And coyote thinking, you know, why can't I strike it more oftener? So in his mind, he wanted to just uh, strike it more again. So he struck it the fifth time and nothing happened. And he struck it the uh, sixth and seventh time, no deer came down off the cliff. Now Coyote is very curious and he said, why aren't the deer falling? And he struck it the eighth time on a rock and that the deer fell, uh, got up and became alive and ran off. And uh, 
Coyote was quite amazed at this, so he ran, quickly ran to the Wittick's house. And just as they got to the Wittick's house, he saw the Wittick uh, going off uh, with the right on a deer's ear out into the distance. So Coyote turned around and went into the Wittick's house. And he looked around. He saw some deer fat in a corner of the house. And he said, well, at least I'll have some to eat. So the Coyote uh, began to eat the deer fat. And just as he swallowed the deer fat, the deer fat came out again and it ran off. And he saw, the coyote saw some deer bones um, uh, right uh, by the fire. So, but just as the coyote was going to grab the bones, the bones ran off and uh, into the distance. And all the blood, the remains of the deer, the blood, the bones, uh, the fur, uh, they came alive and they all ran off into the distance. And coyote was left with nothing to eat. So the next time you see a coyote walking across the street or running across the road or in a field that looks pretty scraggy, this is the reason why the coyote is so skinny at this time. And that's one of the stories that we have uh, shared at Tuckway Village. Uh, there are many more that our knowledge keepers would be glad to share with you uh, when you come to visit us. Um, so please come to, uh, to us in, at Tuckway and we'll be happy to share those stories with you. Homo, Krukstam.